Uh, I handed out the notes. I don't know if there was enough for everybody, so hopefully you can share. Uh, that should be something that should be uh, easily done in a congregation of Christians. So, um, <laughs> the title is Communicating Kingdom Work. What we're going to see is Paul addressing, he's getting towards the end of the letter of Romans. And one of the ideas that's been brought up from chapter 12, really throughout Romans, is how do you unite a congregation that's divided? Humility. Lots of humility and uh, focusing back on Christ. And uh, I heard this story. uh, It's in your notes here. It said that we have a tendency to be like the little leaguer who put all of his 60 pounds into a ferocious swing and barely connected. The ball scraped by the bottom of the bat and just barely jiggled straight back to the pitcher who even himself, he fumbled it and there was still time to to nail the batter at first base, but the pitcher threw it way over the head of the first baseman. So the slugger flew on past first and on to second base. Somebody finally got the ball and they threw it to second base and threw it out into left field. So the hitter swaggered into third, puffing along with a man-sized grin, then continuing on to cross home plate. He said, oh boy, that's the first home run I ever hit in my whole life. You know, technically that is a home run. That is a home run. But for him to brag if he was to say, I hit this home run, I was able to knock the, the leather off of this, uh, this uh, baseball, right? And uh, if he was to, to brag about how he was the, the, the first time that he ever knocked a home run, whatever, you get the point. The tendency is that we can be like that with Jesus, that we do our very best as a Christian sometimes, and we just barely trickle that ball down the way. And uh, God just so happened to work this out. God just so happened to work this out. And then when things all work out, we come and say, look at how hard I worked. Look at all the things that I did for God. Look at what I have accomplished. And it was not even close to your ultimate skill and and, uh, power and and all of those kinds of things. But we can can fall into that trap. And, And I believe that that's what the Jews and Gentiles were doing. And Paul was trying to get them back to a place of humility and learning to work with one another in a congregation. There's going to be several parts of chapter 15 that that are going to break up into sections, and I hope that this makes sense as you go back through it later. But number one, we're, we're going to see that Paul is going to share his strategy, that he had a game plan, he had a focus. For those of you that don't know, he was an apostle, right? He was chosen by Jesus, And he went around all these areas and was doing mission work. He was preaching and teaching Jesus. He planted churches. He was able to help make new converts and and, uh, do amazing things for the Lord. And when you look at verse 15, or I'm chapter 15, verse 16, you get kind of his, his perspective, not just from Romans, but you'll see it in other areas. But here in 15, 16, he says that, God had given Paul grace. He had given, empowered him, really, to be a minister. And that word minister is a different word than the normal uh, deacon or diakonos. It's, it's a different word from doulos, which is like a slave. This is like a minister in the Old Testament that the priests, when they were making offerings and sacrifices, they were ministering. That's a different word that's used here. So, Paul envisions his work as more like um, a priest and offering sacrifices to God. And he said that God has made me a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles. What was his strategy? Go to the Gentiles. Go to those who were not raised with the Bible. Go to those who were not raised with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That was his strategy. That was his goal. That was set aside by God himself to minister as a priest the gospel of God so that my offering of the Gentiles may become acceptable 
sanctified by the Holy Spirit. So Paul looks at his life as, um, as really, I'm out here preaching and teaching and I'm trying to bring these Gentile people into the kingdom. And uh, really what, what, what I think of is, is when, when they are taught the gospel, I'm handing them over to God and this is, my, this is my offering. God, this is the best that I can offer to you. Remember in chapter 12, we become a personal sacrifice to God, like our lives are a personal sacrifice, but ministry, when you start to view your life as it's not just, I'm trying to get to heaven, 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 and it's all about me. It's all about what I got to do. Well, what Paul has, his faith has moved him into an area where it's all about others. You see, when we start moving in our thinking of it's not about me, like I just got to get to heaven, I just got to make it, you know, now it's all about how can I help others? And as I serve them and as I minister to them, as I pray with them, as I work with them, as I teach them, then ultimately I am offering them to God. You become that minister. You are the one. It's not that just me. It's not just the preacher or teacher. All of us become ministers. You see, we are all thinking of other folks. How can I help you go to heaven? 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 Go to heaven? It's all about you. It's all about how can I help you? And then when we view that, now it's, it's not like, well, they didn't listen to me. They didn't appreciate it. it. This is all for God. Did God appreciate it? Did God appreciate you ministering to that person? Did God appreciate you praying for that person? Did God appreciate you sacrificing for that person? Yes. Then God is glorified no matter what they do. No matter what they do. You do what you're supposed to do. It's all about others. And, and this is something that we can think about when we're coming here to, to worship. Like, guys, I am grateful. I am always grateful that, that, we, that you guys make it a, a priority to come and to be a part of us. But listen, if we're to le learn from the Word of God, it is not just about to come here and say, what can I get out of the lesson? What can I get out of the sermon? What can I get out of the singing? You know, what do I get out of it? If this is all that you're doing for one hour a week and you're not ministering and serving other people, then we're not about the kingdom. It's about kingdom work. It's about others. How am I helping others in their faith? You see, you can be doing that even if you're taking home that bulletin and praying for every single person on that bulletin all week long. You are thinking of others. You're ministering to others. We all have a way of serving. And so Paul has this strategy, but for him, it was the Gentile people. He would travel all over and he says, I don't want to go where the gospel's already, already been preached. I want to go to virgin territory. I want to go where nobody else has been. And, and I don't want to build on another man's foundation that they've been taught this way and I got to unteach them and then reteach them. I want to go where it's virgin territory. I want to go where nobody has taught them the gospel. I want them to hear it plain, pure, and simple. Like I want to preach it like that. So Paul would go into all of these places and he would start with the Jewish people. You guys can read Acts 13, Acts 14. He would start with the Jewish people. But then when so many of them rejected him, he would then go to the Gentiles. Some places, it seems like they didn't even have Jewish people, very many, in those areas. And man, he would just start preaching wherever the people were at. Look at Athens, right? He would just go into the marketplace. That's where the people were at. Let me start teaching and preaching there. That's, what, that's where I want to be at. As I try to think about this congregation, Salt River, our focus, we have a strategy. We have a focus that we have... Uh, designed from the very beginning in 2013 to come to Phoenix, Arizona, to Mesa, and that our strategy, our focus would be to reach out to the Native American people in this area. And specifically, uh, all this, this part, um, 
you know, in Kienta, they used to call this like Little Reservation in Mesa that was around Mesa Community College and all this area. But, um, you know, you've got, you've also got the Salt River Pima Reservation right here. So we said, let's, let's make that our focus. And anybody and everybody that wants to be a part of that, then, then let's do that. Let's, let's, make this a, let's make this our goal. Let's make this our strategy. Some people like to reach out to uh, China. Some people like to reach out to the homeless. Some people have a great youth program. You know, whatever your focus and your strategy is, we said, let's reach the natives. That was sort of our strategy, our focus, and the way that Paul was specifically sent to the Gentiles. That's how we've tried to approach the work here. The second thing that I see Paul doing is Paul had a service project. So he talks about how he, what all he has been doing in the past. So he's telling the Romans, he said, listen, this is how I've tried to do mission work. This is how I've tried to minister. But currently, this is what I'm doing. I'm currently raising money to take from all these Gentile churches, these brethren that have become Christians, and I'm collecting money from them, and I'm going to take it to the Christians in Jerusalem, to the Jewish Christians. And what I hope is it's going to be able to unify the churches because, again, the Jew and Gentile churches really had a lot of separation, a lot of struggles to try to come together. So Paul is going to give this explanation of what he is currently doing in verses 25 through 28. He went to great lengths. I mean, this took, this took quite a while. When you read 1 Corinthians 16, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, and chapter 9, he, this, this was a big, big project. And uh, he viewed this as a fruit, uh, again, a type of sacrifice and, and fruitful that it, might, that it might be a good thing. And the strategy that, that he had there is he said that ultimately the gospel came from the Jewish people. That's where Jesus came from. Jesus came from the Jews. The gospel came out of Jerusalem. That's where it started. And from Jerusalem, from the Jews, Paul is a Jew, from those people, it went out into all the world, into the Gentile people. So Paul is going to teach here and in other places that if, if I have benefited spiritually from you, then I am to give back to you financially. That's why a preacher is to be paid by those that he preaches and teaches to. That's, that's what the Bible teaches. That if you have been taught spiritually, then your contribution back to that person is to help them financially. So if the Jews are the ones who took the gospel, then Paul is gathering money from all these Gentiles and he's going to say, listen, you guys have benefited spiritually. Gather all your money and I'll take this back to the Jewish Christians, those who are really suffering and poor, and then I'm hoping that this concept will be blended together between all of us and we'll view each other as one big body, one big family, one big church of Christ, whether you're in Rome or whether you're in Jerusalem, whether you're Jew, whether you're Gentile, that's how I want it to be. So Paul is really putting a lot of effort into this, uh, into this ministry, this service project, so that he can bring them together. But he wants to involve the Romans. He's, and, and so in verse 30, look at verse 30, what he says. Now I urge you, brethren, you, you in Rome, I'm urging you, I'm, I'm, I'm pleading with you. Notice how he doesn't command them. He's not commanding them. He's up, I'm urging you, I'm pleading with you by our Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ and by the love of the Spirit to strive. This word strive is, is at the end of a, a, end of a race. When you're racing, at the end you're striving, you're sh that last stretch. Strive together with me in your prayers to God for me. You know what, you Roman Christians, I am I'm pleading with you to join with me in prayer. That's what I need you to do. I need you to pray with me about what I'm doing. I'm going to take this money over here to Jerusalem, and there's two things that I'm specifically asking God for. Number one, 
I'm praying that I will be rescued from the disobedient Jews. That's what I'm, I, I, I know there could be some real conflict when I go over there. A lot of these Jews are not happy with what I'm teaching. So I'm, I'm praying that, that I'll be rescued. I'm praying for safety, basically. Number two is he's praying that the gift will be well, well received by those saints, by those brethren in Jerusalem. He's saying, would you guys please pray with me? I want this to go well. I want the brethren there to accept this money. I want them to be touched. I want them to see the love. I want them to see the grace of God. And I want it to become a unifying factor. That's what I'm praying for. And would you guys in Rome, would you please join me in doing that? Now, as I think about here at Salt River, we're gearing up for a service project. We've got this group from Tennessee coming in two weeks. Two weeks, they're coming. And we've got a service project and, and we're trying to serve in multiple ways. We're trying to share the gospel. We're going to be door knocking. We're going to be trying to work on a few people's houses. Um, but God is working in, in a lot of different ways. He's, he's serving for multiple purposes. One, the Graymere group is blessed. Now, for those of you that don't know, this is their spring break. And the adults, they're having to take a week's vacation. Okay, so that's that's a sacrifice. You know, they're not going to, to, uh, to, to go to Hawaii or something like that for their vacation. They're coming here to work. That's, that's, what, they're, that's what they're doing for their week's vacation. Uh, they're coming here to serve. For the kids, their spring break. Again, they're not uh, just, just hanging out at home and, and watching movies all week. They're coming to here to, to work for a week. And it never ceases to amaze me of how many of those groups leave and they always say, we were so blessed. We were the ones that were blessed. In my mind, I thought, we're going out there to do mission work. We want to bless you guys. We want to help you guys. And then every single time, every single time, they leave and they say, we're the ones that were blessed. They were brought closer to God. They were the ones that viewed this as an offering to God. And yet, the Bible says it's more blessed to give than to receive, right? Right? So the ones who are serving are the ones who are blessed. And, and so they're the ones who are, are blessed. But those of us, those of you guys, that every single time we have a group or we have a seminar, we have a campaign, there are so many of you guys in here that step up and really serve. You're the ones who are blessed. Now, I know you get tired. I, I, I get that. We, we get tired. But you're the ones who are blessed. Then we've got those who are also that we're trying to reach out to that are non-Christians. We're trying to invite friends and we're trying to invite family. We're trying to knock doors. We're trying to serve people that their houses may need some help. Um, we're teaching Bible classes. We're feeding food. We're, we're making food. We're cleaning up. I mean, all of these things, those who are receiving the ministering, those who are receiving being served, they're being blessed, right? They're being blessed. And especially if they're growing in their faith, then they're the ones who are growing and, and uh, drawing closer to God as well. So I see that God works in these service projects and, and is accomplishing many things. But ultimately, as Paul is going to say, he wants all of these works to bring glory to God. Hopefully, Graymere is honoring God. Hopefully, we are honoring God. Hopefully, those new people out there that we're serving, they're honoring God. All of it works together to give Him the praise, to give Him the glory. That's the goal. Number three, we see not only is, is Paul have a strategy of what he has done, but he has a service project of what he is currently doing. And number three, he is staging the next step. He's getting ready to say, hey, once this is done, now I want to talk to you about what I'm planning on doing. And you see this in verses 22 through 24, 28 and 29 and verse 32. So Paul said that once I drop this money off and this hopefully goes well, then I ultimately, I want to have some 
plans to come to you guys in Rome. He had never been there. He hadn't, he hadn't gone there yet. So he said, listen, I, I want to come see you guys. In fact, many years I have longed to be with you guys. I want to come and have fellowship in joy and refreshing rest. And that refreshing rest, and if you guys go back and look that up in joy, he talks about this multiple times in chapter 14 and in chapter 15 that they were divided, so there was no peace. Not a lot of joy when a lot of fighting is going on. And so he's like, I want this to be in peace and I want there to be joy. That's how I want to come and visit you guys, that it will be a wonderful, a wonderful situation so he can come and, and be with them. Paul was also preparing them to get involved financially. Now, you might not have noticed it, but, but look at verse 24. So Paul says, whenever I go to Spain, his ultimate goal was not to go to Rome because the gospel was already there, right? The church is already there. I, I, I've preached in all these areas over here. I need to go beyond into Spain. You know, I need, to, I need to start moving beyond. For I hope to see you in passing and to be helped on my way there by you. Now that right there, the way he says that, he's also going to express that in chapter 16 about his sister Phoebe that you need to help her in whatever matter she may have need of. There's several times in the Bible where you're a missionary, you're a preacher, you need financial help. It costs money to hop on a boat. It costs money to buy food. It costs money to have food or, or clothes to, to, to keep up with. All of that takes money. So he is now saying, Listen, after I'm done with this Jerusalem thing, then my goal is to go to Spain, but I'll stop off and see you guys. And then I hope to go on with you guys, hopefully financially helping me in this next stage of my journey. Because Philippi and other churches have been helping him in this region. But now if you think about Rome, now Paul is thinking, man, I'm going to start going way out there. It would be nice if Rome was able to start supporting me because you had Antioch and then he had Philippi. And now if you had Rome, as he continues to make his way to spread the gospel, he's preparing them. He's preparing them financially to say, hey, get ready. I hope that uh, this is something that you guys will help us with. As we think about Salt River, there are plans for the Totochinis to, to, to move back to the Navajo Reservation in Cayenta. Uh, plans for the Guajardos to move back to many farms to uh, do mission work there. Uh, plans for Ezekiel and Julie to move to Denver and uh, to attend Bible training school and then to move into full-time preaching and teaching of the Word. Uh, there's a lot of preparation of what we're trying to say, what's coming up, what's in the future. Right. And that takes effort. It takes work. That takes planning. And Paul is trying to communicate kingdom work. So he's listen, this is what I've done in the kingdom. This is what I am doing in the kingdom. And this is what I plan on doing in the kingdom. And so you can read about all the all of his plans and and uh, what he hopes to accomplish. Uh, he makes plans. He makes plans, even though he knows Paul will say that uh, there's no promise of a tomorrow, but he's still making plans. He's still making plans for what's, what's upcoming. So we have to think in those ways as well. And then our final point is that Paul's strength. If you look back, if Paul had been somebody else, if he struggled with arrogance, listen, I, I like the way that uh, Hughes had said this. He said, Paul could easily have said this in his letters. Did I tell you about my Iconium escapade? Let me tell you, I was being stoned in Iconium because I stood tall for Jesus. I was always getting the stones. Barnabas, on the other hand, he always managed to save his pretty face. Well, I was, I was really, I was the one taking it, but I stood my ground. I didn't flinch. And finally, this guy threw a stone and put me down. It would have killed most men, but, but not me. 
So there I was, lying on a rubbish pile outside the city. Barnabas and the saints had all gone to pieces, but I was awake, and I got to laughing. What's a little stoning? You know what? The Lord needs more men like me, I guess. Do we sometimes fall into that category where I barely hit that baseball and it just trickled down and, and uh, we think about how great of a player that I am and, and what amazing things that I have done. And really, it was God who just worked this out and God just worked that out. And that's why when you look here, what Paul says in verse 15, he says, the grace of God that was given to me from God was to be a minister to the Gentiles. You see, it, it, it wasn't me. God gave me this grace to go out and, and minister to these guys. Verse 18, Paul says, I will only speak of what Christ has accomplished through me. Verse 18 and 19, he says, The obedience of the Gentiles, that came about in the power of signs and wonders, in the power of the Spirit. You know, it's... it's it's not Paul. He's just a servant. He's just a minister. He's just a, just a guy out here trying to honor God and, and, and do, his, do his work. It's all to the glory of God. In all that happened, in all that is happening, in all that will happen, I pray that what we do here at Salt River will be with this same type of humility. I pray that we have a sense of gratitude for all that God has accomplished in our lives, that all that we can look back and say, man, God just worked that out and God just worked that out. And to Him be praised, to Him be the glory, because who am I, right? And I should not be looking down on anybody else in the congregation that you have your struggles, I have my struggles. And hopefully in a humble spirit together, both of us, are looking at us as at each other as more important than the other. Like, I view your life as more important than my life. You see, that's the way we're going to unify. That's the way that we're going to really grow in it as, as a body so that whatever is accomplished, it's by God, for God, through God, right? And it's all, all to His glory. It's all to His glory. So as you look at this letter, I hope that, you know, you're not just reading and you're like, oh, I don't know what's going on, but you can really say, what if Paul was writing to us? What if I was in Rome? What, what is he explaining? He's explaining like, hey, I view this work as ministry. This is a way of offering a sacrifice to God, and I want you guys to join in with me. I want you to pray with me. I want you to get financially involved with me. I want us to make this a part of our lives. This is a kingdom work. This is what we're all about. So, brethren, those of you that are in the kingdom, then um, I hope that this motivates you. I hope that this maybe stirs you up to say, there's more that I can do. But for those of us that are not Christians, then they're not even in the kingdom work. And what Paul has said in Romans chapter 6 is for those who have died to yourself, you're ready to repent, you put your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ, then be ready to be baptized into Jesus and be resurrected to a new life. That's, that's a life that belongs to Him now. It's not your life anymore. You give it all to Him. It's His life. And so I pray that this has been helpful and, and uh, encouraging for you. If it's convenient, if you need to respond right now to the invitation, we have a song ready as together we stand and sing.